So today I'm going to teach you how to use the sum if and sum ifs formulas in Excel. These are actually really easy to learn and they're really powerful with a lot of use cases. So let's go ahead and dive in. First of all, I want to show you the spreadsheet that I'm using here is something that you have access to if you're using Office 365 and most people don't even know it exists. So if you're in Office 365 and have Excel open, you can go to the file tab and you should see this formulas or getting started with formulas spreadsheet. There are some others like this as well that you can search for in the uh, list that Microsoft provides there. But if you click on that, it's going to open up this right here. You can see there's tabs all across the bottom that it's going to give you a good introduction to a lot of Excel's common formulas. So I'm going to use this as we get started and then I'll bring in another sheet that will show you a sort of real life use case. To get started though, let's look at just the SUMIF formula. So we have a list here of fruits and amounts associated with each fruit. Let's say maybe these are a list of sales. And let's just say I want to be able to click from a drop down box each of these fruits and have it tell me well, how much in apples, how many apples did we sell? Maybe it's a, a quantity. How many apples or how many oranges did we sell and so on. So to do that, we can use the simple sum if formula. So to do that, I'll select this cell and type equals sum if open my parentheses, and it's going to prompt us for a range. Now, this range is the range to which you want to apply your criteria and not the range you're trying to sum. That's the mistake most people make when they begin using this formula. So we want to get the range that we're trying to filter the data based on, essentially, or apply our criteria to, which would be the fruit. So I'm going to select that range and then do a comma to separate, get to that next argument, which is criteria. And for that, I could type in a hard-coded value like apple or orange, but instead I'm going to use the cell that they already have set up here where that drop down menu is and you'll see how that functions in a minute. So that's cell C17, then another comma to get to the next argument which is the amount. So I'm going to get that range, that's the range that we're trying to sum. Close that parentheses, hit enter, and now you can see it's telling us a quantity of 60 oranges. If I change this to apples, you'll see it change every fruit I select. So now we have a dynamic drop down here that's automatically updating that and you can see that was a really simple formula to write. It's just got three arguments. Uh, it's going to ask you for the range, your criteria, and then the sum, the range that you're trying to sum. So now let's look at the sum ifs formula. It's a little bit more tricky but I actually think that the order that they give it to you in is more intuitive. So hit I'm going to, our, the example that we're going to use is this table right here. So now we don't just have fruit, we also have types of fruit. And so maybe I want to see the quantity of Fuji apples in particular opposed to a different type of apples like Honeycrisp. So to do that, we can select this cell that's been prepared for the SUMIFS formula and type equals SUMIFS. Open that parentheses, and again, it's going to bring up this prompt, which will be helpful. This asks for the sum range first, so it's backwards or opposite from the sum if formula. Thanks, Microsoft. But I actually prefer it this way, so we're going to go ahead and get that sum ifs range, and now hit comma. It's going to ask us for the criteria range. So what's our first criteria range? Well, the first one in the order does not matter, but the first one we're going to do is the fruit, then another comma so that I can select the actual criteria we're applying to that, which would be this cell. And then it's going to ask for another criteria. Every time we hit comma, it'll just keep asking for criteria range, range and criteria pairs. So the next criteria range is the type, another comma, and then it's going to ask for what that criteria is. So again, I could type in Fuji if I wanted to hard code something in here. But instead, so it's more dynamic, I'm going to use the cell uh, that's already been prepared for that with the drop down menu here and close my parentheses and hit enter. So you can see we have a quantity of 110 Fuji apples. Now if I change this to oranges and select Florida, now it's showing only 20 Florida oranges. So you can see in just a few seconds, you can write a formula that's really powerful and summarizes that data well. Now let's look at one more example that may be helpful for you. So let's just say you just got hired somewhere maybe Dunder Mifflin, and Michael Scott has asked you to create a spreadsheet that is going to summarize the hours from each employee's timesheet. So here we have Jim's timesheet where he's been entering all of his time. He works very hard, and now we want to be able to create a spreadsheet that's going to summarize that. So you can have a start date and end date for a particular payroll cycle, and it will return automatically how many hours he worked. So to do that, we can use the sum ifs formula. So we'll type in sum ifs, open the parentheses. Now in this case, the data is on another sheet and that's no problem at all. We'll just click on the sheet and continue on as we had in the previous example. One thing to be aware of though, is that you cannot use the sum ifs or any of the uh, math ifs uh, 
floral formulas in Excel across different workbooks. So if this was in a completely different spreadsheet and not just another tab, uh, the sum ifs and average ifs and max ifs formulas don't work that way. In this case, though, it's in the same spreadsheet, so we're good to go. So it's asking for the sum range. Well, if I click on gems tab, that's going to be the hours column. And in this case, since I've formatted this range as a table, I can actually just hover my mouse over the table until it turns into that black arrow, left click, and it's going to select now that whole column. And you see it calls it by the table name and then the field name. So table one hours. What's really nice about that is as Jim comes in and keeps entering in his new entries, it's just going to keep expanding because that table automatically expands. So this is a good way to, to approach that. Okay, so that's the sum range that we want to use, but what's the criteria? Well, the first criteria is going to be the date. So we're, again, we're trying to figure out how many hours he worked between a start and an end date. So we're going to do the same thing for the date column. And here's where it gets a little bit more tricky because I want to add a criteria which is going to be uh, greater than or equal to the date specified on the payroll tab. Well, to do that, you might wonder, well, how do I do a greater than equal to? Uh, you may try just doing greater than equal to here. That won't actually work. You need to put it in quotes so that Excel can process it as text. So I'm going to do a open quote, greater than, equal to, close my quote, and then an and symbol, which is going to join those two terms together. So Excel is going to read this as uh, doing a sum if where the date in the date column for Jim's timesheet is greater than or equal to whatever I select next, which is going to be this start date from the payroll tab. That way, again, it's dynamic, and as that gets updated, the hours will update accordingly. Okay, so now I can hit a comma, and it's going to ask me for the second criteria range and the second criteria. Well, the criteria range is going to be the date field again, because now we're just looking at that uh, ending date from the payroll tab. So I'm going to select that column, same column again and hit comma. But this time I want it to be less than or equal to. So I'll do the less than equal to again, crouched in those quotation symbols. And then an and symbol, which is going to join those two terms together in Excel's formula mind. And now I can select the end date right there. And I'm going to close my parentheses, hit enter. And now you can see Jim worked 102.75 hours over this two-week period. I told you he's, he's a hard worker. So we have 8.1 and 8.14. But, for example, if we change this to 8.7, notice that that automatically updates. Uh, so we have a dynamic formula here. And we could do the same thing for Pam, Jim, and Michael. So there's a good example of how to use the SUMIFS formula in a real-life scenario and also getting you familiar with how to use the comparative operators like greater than, equal to, or greater than, equal, uh, greater than or equal to, and so on. Um, okay, and so that is the sum ifs and sum if formulas. If you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment in the comment section. And as always, if you like this video, please hit like, subscribe, and the notification icon so you can keep getting access to Excel tips and tricks that are going to make your life easier and your business better.